Okay, it's Henry again, and today I'm going to be doing part three of my airbrush tutorial series. And in this video, I'm going to go over the different types of paints, what kind of thinners they use, and how to thin them for the airbrush. Alright, so there are three main types of paint that modelers use for uh, well, pretty much anything, hand brushing or airbrushing. Uh, acrylics, enamels, and lacquers. And the first up is acrylics, and I actually don't have any to uh, show you at the moment because I don't have any on me, uh, which I'll explain later. Uh, but anyway, acrylic paint is, most of the time it's a water-based paint, sometimes it's an alcohol-based paint. Um, it's really kind of tricky that way. But by and large, acrylic paints are the easiest to find and the cheapest paints uh, out there. Uh, Tamiya is a very, very uh, popular brand of acrylic paint that a lot of modelers like to use. Um, also, testers and model masters have acrylic paints as well. Mr. Hobby makes acrylic paints, I believe that's called uh, Mr. Aqueous Color. Uh, those are actually harder to find than their lacquer paints, though. But um, anyway, you can theoretically also use cheap, like Walmart Ceramicoat acrylic paint. So uh, it's just a matter of thinning it properly for the airbrush, although I wouldn't really recommend using that. Um, some of the pros of acrylic paints are that they dry really quickly. Uh, by and large, they're non-toxic. Um, I'm not sure that all acrylic paints are non-toxic. Um, somebody uh, leave a comment if you know more about that than I do. And like I said, they're pretty easy to find and they're relatively inexpensive. Uh, the cons of acrylic paint being that they're really not all that durable. Uh, they're prone to scratching and wearing off a lot easier than uh, enamels and lacquers. And the quick drying time can sometimes be uh, sort of a curse because I have had instances of acrylic paint drying so fast that it actually starts drying inside the airbrush and when that happens uh, nothing good can come of it. Um, you're going to have a really hard time trying to get your airbrush cleaned out if the paint inside it is already dry so just be careful and be aware of that. So moving on to enamel paints uh, here in North America testers is a very popular brand of enamel paints. Model Master also has enamel. Um, Tamiya makes enamel paints, but is the way I see it, it's not very easily obtainable here uh, in the West. Uh, over in Asia, uh, in those countries, they can get Tamiya enamels a lot easier than us. Um, but here, Tamiya acrylics are really easy to find, but their enamels are not, unfortunately. But testers and model master uh, make up for that because these are actually really good paints. Um, back uh, a few years ago, I did uh, use Rust-Oleum uh, enamel paints, and I use those in the airbrush. Um, Rust-Oleum is almost as good as uh, almost as good a quality as testers. The problem I had with Rust-Oleum is I was buying them in uh, the little half pint uh, and one quart size cans. And even though back then I was just uh, doing snap fits and uh, copy the box art paint jobs, and I was cranking out like one or two kits a month, even at that rate I was going through the paint so slowly that the paint was starting to dry. The air inside the can was causing the paint to dry inside the can, and the uh, paint would get kind of clumpy, and that would lead to clogs on my airbrush, and it was just not very fun. So uh, at that point I moved on to uh, testers, enamels, uh, some of the pros of enamel is that, in my opinion, enamel is the most durable of the three types of paints. Lacquer is pretty darn durable, but I think enamel, in my experience from what I've done, uh, usually is the most scratch resistant. Uh, also, enamel tends to be the shiniest of the three paints. Uh, if you're going for a high gloss paint job, I think enamel is a really good option. Uh, just because of its slow drying time, which is actually one of its cons. Uh, enamel takes a really long time to dry compared to the other two. Uh, testers, I can usually get away with uh, leaving it to set overnight and then I'll be able to handle parts in the morning, so uh, 
uh, a good 12 hour sit but uh, depending on what brand enamel paint you're using you may want to give it as much as 24 hours before you start messing with the parts especially if uh, you're wanting to go for a high gloss paint job um, also uh, enamel paint is toxic you're not going to want to breathe those fumes uh, it's not as bad as lacquer but still bad enough that you don't want to be breathing this stuff so and finally the third type of paint is lacquer paint now I know testers and actually I'm not yeah testers and model masters make lacquer paints but from what I've seen their selection their color selection isn't that big I think it's mostly like uh, car colors like Italian red and a Chevy blue or whatever uh, Mr. Color is a very popular lacquer paint uh, brand also Gaia notes is another really popular one uh, I think here in the US it's a little bit easier for us to get a hold of Mr. Color uh, than Gaia notes but uh, you know whatever you feel like going to look for um, I'm not sure I, I think Tamiya's spray cans are lacquer I believe but I don't know that Tamiya makes lacquer in a bottle I've never seen any so um, I use Mr. Color. Um, I really like uh, their color selection. They have a huge color selection. And one of the advantages to it is that they have their Gundam color line. Uh, this is extra dark gray, one of the three shades of gray they make. Uh, basically, it's a series of paints mixed specifically for Gundam models. Uh, they have, you know, Gundam white, Gundam yellow, Gundam blue, Gundam red. They have Zaku green, Shar Zaku pink, Dom purple, things like that. So that's uh, really convenient on top of their already very large color selection. Um, some pros of lacquer paint. It's, in my experience, almost as durable, practically as durable as enamel, uh, relatively resistant to uh, scratching. Uh, it's quick drying. It's, re it's just as quick as acrylic paint. Um, but due to the nature of how uh, lacquer thinner works, um, it, it's not going to dry inside the airbrush. As long as that lacquer thinner is there, the paints, yeah, you're not going to have to really worry about that. And plus, lacquer thinner does a much better job of uh, cleaning up uh, excess and dried paint than uh, water or uh, rubbing alcohol, uh, like with acrylics. Anyway, cons of lacquer are that it is uh, very, very toxic. It's the most toxic of the three paints, so you will definitely want to use a spray booth and a respirator when dealing with this stuff because uh, lacquer thinner is some nasty stuff. It will actually melt your model kits if, uh, let me clarify, airbrushing you don't have to worry about it melting your model kit. Uh, if you submerge a piece of a model kit in lacquer paint it will melt the part so if it can do that to a plastic model kit imagine what it's doing to your lungs. Uh, also, one of the cons is lacquer paint tends to be the most expensive the, the, of the three types. Uh, on top of that, here uh, in North America, it's probably the hardest to get a hold of. I use lacquer paints just because um, the quality is the best uh, overall, in my opinion. Primer, you can uh, find in pretty much acrylic, enamel, or lacquer. Um, I've used acrylic primer before. Um, I don't recommend it because I didn't have very good experience with it. it. It scratched off and peeled off really easily. Um, I've used enamel primer and spray cans that worked out pretty well. And nowadays I'm using lacquer primer via Mr. Surfacer. Uh, Tamiya also makes a lacquer primer as well. So, um, the different types of thinner you're going to be using. With acrylic paint is kind of tricky. Some acrylic, I think, I think all acrylic paints are water soluble. Somebody correct me uh, if I'm wrong on that. And some acrylic paints are soluble with isopropyl alcohol. Um, I, whenever I do use acrylics, I like to use uh, alcohol. I just find that it's get it's produces sort of a smoother finish. Also, um, alcohol doesn't have that that water tension effect like uh, water does so it doesn't really like form droplets and stuff. Uh, enamel you are going to be using mineral spirits. Uh, you can get like testers or uh, 
Tamiya brand enamel thinner, but honestly I've never had any problem with uh, just using hardware store uh, mineral spirit paint thinner. Uh, make sure, you know, mineral spirit uh, spirits, because enamel is an oil-based paint, so this is what you're going to want to use to uh, thin that. And for lacquer paints, that one's easy, you use lacquer thinner. All these over here. Now, I find that Mr. Color Leveling Thinner, um, I'm sure uh, Gaia Notes makes something uh, along the same lines. Uh, this has a retarder agent in it, which sort of lengthens the drying time slightly and also uh, lets the paint go on a bit smoother. This stuff is really, really nice. I learned the hard way that uh, when you use regular hardware store lacquer thinner with lacquer paints, it doesn't go on as smooth. Your paint job's going to end up kind of rough because I think it's just because the paint is drying so fast. So I use this for actually thinning the paints, and then I'll use hardware store lacquer thinner for uh, cleaning up uh, my airbrush and my workstation and my tools afterwards. So, now that all that explanation is out of the way, we can go on to actually thinning the paint. Now, the way you're going to want to do this is uh, you'll want a small mixing tray or a cup of some sort. Some people will mix the thinner and the paint in the airbrush, and on occasion I do that when I'm just being lazy and I don't want to have to clean out one of these. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to tell you to do it in a tray or a mixing cup. Now, let's see, um, I guess we'll, now let me get a solid color. Here we go, i use black. Now, these paints are pretty thick, straight out of the bottle. And this is probably the question I get asked most about uh, airbrushing, is how thin does the paint need to be to airbrush? Now, right now, it's... You know, it runs, but it's not super thin. So, let me move this. I'm just going to kind of rest him here. What you are going to want to do is get a little pipette. Get your paint thinner. And you're going for basically the consistency of the paint thinner. Now, this is where it gets sort of tricky you're gonna be looking for a sweet spot. Uh, you want the paint to be as thin as the thinner, but any more than that is gonna be too thin. Because if you get the paint too thin, then uh, when you spray it on your parts, it's gonna run everywhere and it's not gonna look good at all. So once you get the paint to just about the consistency of the thinner, See, this can probably use a little bit more thinner, not much, just a couple drops. That's when you're just about ready. And this is one of those things that will get easier with practice. The more you uh, thin your paint, the more you're going to get a feel of what the right consistency is. See, I think this paint is just about ready. So this is about what you're going to be looking for. For the paint to be just just as thin as the thinner, but uh, again, you don't want to thin it any more than that. Otherwise, it's going to be too thin and it's not going to look good on your kit. But the good news is, if you do get your paint too thin, all you got to do is add a little bit more uh, paint to it. Or if it's not thin enough, just add a little bit more thinner. So I think that just about does it for this video. If I've missed anything or if you have any more questions, go ahead and ask those in the comments. And uh, in the next part, part four, we will go over uh, actually loading the paint into the airbrush and go over some basic airbrushing techniques. So with that, I'll see you guys next time.